Hey, we were, we were praying this morning, and um, I had a, a bit of a, a sort of an impression, picture, call it what you want, of a tree. And this tree had a whole bunch of sort of dead leaves around it. There were green leaves coming through the tree, but there were a lot of dead leaves on it too. And, and the, the impression I got was that the, the, these, the, these dead leaves that were on this tree, that God was wanting to come and shake the tree. Because the dead leaves on the tree were not allowing the sunlight to get through to the roots so that the roots could continue to produce what was meant to be being produced on the tree. And I, I felt like uh, the impression I got was that that was a picture of some people's faith. That God wants to come along and he wants to grab the trunk of your tree and shake it because you, you, you have faith and maybe you've had moments of great faith and, 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 and in your walk with the Lord. But along, somewhere along the line, some of the leaves on that tree have, have died. And as those leaves have died, they've kind of created a canopy. And the root is still good, but the sunlight can't get through to the root so that the root can continue to produce the faith uh, that God wants to produce in our life. How many of you know the Bible uh, talks to us as believers as uh, actually moving onwards and upwards in our faith? The Bible doesn't give us a picture of the New Testament letters. Paul doesn't write to a bunch of people and go, where you are right now is perfect. Just stay there and maintain it. He doesn't say that. Peter doesn't say, where you are is awesome, just maintain it. Um, my shadow is not healing the sick yet. I, 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 I try it every now and then. If I'm in a hospital, I'll just deliberately walk past a sick person without them knowing, and no one's jumped up, nobody. Nobody's popped up. Uh, so my, my wife's got a sore finger at the moment, and I've, I got a, sort of, but she's still sitting there with a sore finger. And so on. So I'm, I'm not a finished product. I still feel like there's spaces and places that God wants to take me to. There's more uh, understanding of my Heavenly Father that I don't have, but I really want to get it. And, and so uh, Arise has this prophetic name to it. The, the, the reason that we're called Arise is it's not just a nice, cool name for church. Uh, it's a prophetic statement. Uh, which sort of says, get up. Okay, you might have been knocked down, but get back up. Like the old prophet Chumbawamba from the, the remember that prophet Chumbawamba in the 80s? I get knocked down, but I get up again. Anyone know that one? I get knocked down, but I... what a prophetic song, you know? What a statement for the church. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Uh, I think they stole that from Micah. Micah says, uh, I think Micah 7, something about, you know, don't gloat over me, my enemies, for though I have fallen, I will arise. I'm going to get back up again. So um, thank you to all those people that actually understood the Chumbawamba reference too, by the way. The rest of you, I'll explain it later. But I, I, I have this sense in my spirit, in my heart at the moment, that we're coming into a season uh, where God is wanting to shake that tree and, and some of that stuff that is stopping our faith, that's stifling our faith, some of that stuff that's not allowing the sunlight to come through and actually hit the roots and continue to produce in us the life of God. And, that, and, and, and those leaves can represent a whole lot of things, but I just feel like we're coming into a season where God's wanting to, to, to begin to remove some of those things that have slowed down our faith or have killed our expectation uh, uh, and, and, and our belief that, you know, God, God, how many of you know God has a plan and a purpose for your life? We, we, we hear that so often. Don't we? we hear that thrown about, we hear it preached, there are books about it and so on. But deep down inside, how many of us get up each day with a, just a sense of drudgery and monotony? Like it's, but it's just another day, you know? No real excitement that it is another day, but you know what? It's another day that the Lord has made. That makes it a pretty special day. Not only is the day special, but, but God has, if God has plans and purposes for me, and I woke up this morning, I went online and I looked in the obituary section, of the, on, and I didn't see my name there, so I thought, this is going to be a good day because I'm still here because, God, you gave me a breath this morning. And every breath I take is a gift from God. So until my use-by date is up, I'm going to keep breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out as a gift from God because he has a plan and a purpose for my life and he wants me to be here. And it's the same for each person here. God has a plan and a purpose. And as long as you have breath in your life, you are a life of purpose. Amen. Yours is a life of purpose. And I know that, 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 you know, that we go through stages where we really uh, feel like we're walking in that purpose. Then there are those seasons of life where maybe you just feel like you're sort of just you know, drudging through and maintaining things. But it doesn't matter how we're feeling. It's by faith that we trust God. We trust it when, when, when Paul writes in Ephesians that you are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works. He doesn't stop there though. He says, which God prepared in advance for you. So God prepared the works before he prepared you. Think about that. 
Think about that. God prepared these works for you, these things that he wanted you to walk in. And then he sat back. So it's like God came up with a plan and said, that's the plan. That's what I want to do. Now I'm going to sit back with the angels and go, now, now what, what do we need to create to fulfill that? And then he creates you. So the works were created first. It's like, like uh, you know, what came first, the shovel or the need to dig a hole in the dirt? It was probably the need to dig a hole in the dirt, right? I don't think someone created day, got a bit of metal and belted it and curved it and went, whoa, look at this, stick a bit of wood on the end. Whoa, isn't that awesome? Well, now what can we do with this? No, no, that started with a purpose. We've got to get dirt from there over there so that we can put something else in there. How are we going to do that? And they probably dug around with their hands and thought there's got to be a better way. And somebody creates this thing called a shovel, but the purpose was created before the shovel. The, the, the shovel was created to fulfill the purpose. And that's what Paul's saying in Ephesians, that, that we're God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared in advance that we'd walk in them. So the purpose came and you were created for a purpose. I believe that with all my heart. Who believes that? We're created for a purpose. And every purpose is going to be different. Every race we run in this room is going to be different. And I'm not you and you're not me. So I'm not trying to be like you and you shouldn't be trying to be like me. We should all be trying to be like Jesus. Amen. I'm trying to be more like him. I'm, I'm trying to be fashioned and formed into his uh, image. So, so I, I, I have this sense, this feeling that God's wanting to, to call us up again or call us, or some of us maybe call us back to a place of waking up each day and actually living this Christian life with a sense of faith and expectancy because we're not here by accident. I don't believe that we're... I, I, you know what? We lived in Ballina. Me and my wife lived in Ballina. Ballina's beautiful. Hey? It, anyone from Ballina? Any, yeah. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Like, it's just lovely. And then God calls us up here to Lismore. It is a beautiful place. But it's not as beautiful as Balna, you know? And, 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 and there, can be a, you know, there can be a longing for what was, and oh, I wish we could go back. I wish we would live, you know, by the river again. And be, have the, you know. but, but, but the fact of the matter is, you know, every, when I wake up and I go downtown into the basin and I drive around and I see, you know, all these empty shops and, and, and this, this feeling of hopelessness in our community. But when I walk around, I go, but you know what, God? There's a, I was made for a purpose. And my purpose must involve being here for this season of my life. I don't, know, I don't know my whole purpose. I couldn't outline, but I'm meant to be here for a reason, and you are meant to be here for a reason. And so we really are. We hear this so old Christians, we're people of destiny. But the truth is, if we get into this collection of ancient documents, that's what these writers believed. They believed we are people of destiny. They didn't believe that we were here by a random act of chance. I could have been born in China in the 15th century, but I wasn't. I was born in Blacktown in 1972, you know? Someone once said, can anything good come out of Blacktown? And then I met uh, Lorian and Shannon. Lorian was born in Blacktown too, so that's two good things that have come out. Anyone born in Blacktown? Anybody else? You were born in Blacktown. That's three good things that come out of Blacktown. That's amazing. Four, five, Blacktown. Oh, wow. Wow, I just, I just felt my faith surge then. You know, if, if God can do that out of Blacktown, what can he do out of Lismore? Come on. Come on. There's a whole world out there of opportunity and possibility. And so I believe that we're coming into this season where God's wanting to shake that tree and revive for some of us our faith again. Amen. Challenge us in our faith. Challenge us in our expectation. Because here's the thing. If you're not, you, the only people in life who are never disappointed are the people who never expect anything. Right? The people who never expect anything are never disappointed. But when I read this collection of ancient documents, I can't help but think the writers are trying to say to us, we actually have something to be in expectation about. We have some things to be excited about. We have some things that we can be believing for. We have some things that God wants to bring into our world. And we need to go through this life with our eyes open. Otherwise, we might miss some of those things. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus said, what the Spirit is saying. In other words, everybody here, you're listening, but are you really listening? Everybody here, you're seeing, but are you really seeing? Because God has great things for us. In Mark chapter 5, I was reading this uh, uh, story again. I've read it a, a thousand times. But I read it uh, yesterday, the day before, and it, something hit me about it that I hadn't seen before. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 28. It's about the woman, anyway, the, the woman with the issue of blood. She was bleeding. Now, this woman is, is, she's in a position where she shouldn't be. By all intents and cultural purpose, she's unclean. 
She shouldn't be where she is in amongst the people. But there was just something in her that went, you know, what the heck? I don't care. Jesus is coming through town and I'm going to brush aside everybody. I'm going to push through the crowd and I'm going to reach out and touch Jesus. She challenges me because quite often we sit back going, oh, Jesus, I need a touch from you. This woman said, I'm not waiting for a touch from you. I'm going to touch you. She runs after him and she goes after him and she touches him. But here's where the story goes. It says a woman was there who'd been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Everyone say 12 years. 12 years. There any 12-year-olds in the, in, in the church building this morning? Any 12-year-olds here? No? Any? Got a, yeah, got a 12-year-old. Look at that. The whole existence of your life, this woman, what suffered from this bleeding problem. For the, imagine from the day you were born to now, this whole time, 12 years. That's a long time. My daughter had her formal. Where's Chloe? Is she here? Where's Chloe? She was here? Okay. Well, my daughter, we had her formal uh, on Wednesday night. And it was a celebration of 12 long years of education that she went through. And think about it, that whole time, everything we went through, she's gone through this bleeding episode for 12 years. And she'd suffered a great deal at the care of many doctors. Everyone say many doctors. Many doctors. 12 years. I want you to think about this woman. 12 years. That's a long time. Not only 12 years with this, but she'd been to many doctors. She hadn't just gone to one. She went, okay, I, that, you couldn't help me. What about you? Okay, you can't help me. Well, what about you? You can't help me. Well, what about Dr. Jasper? Can you help me, Dr. Jasper? A doctor, you know, she just kept going from doctor to doctor to doctor. She's bleeding for 12 years. She's going from doctor to doctor. And then it says that she was under the care of many doctors, spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Everyone say grow worse. 12 years. Many doctors. And growing worse. That doesn't sound like a recipe to build faith, does it? Hey? How many of you, if you're this woman, 12 years, you've been to many doctors, and you're actually getting worse. It's not even like you're staying where you are. You're getting worse. Getting worse. This woman is going through it. But somehow, after 12 years, after many doctors... After growing worse, she still got this faith to come after Jesus and go, I'll give Jesus a try. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'll be made right. She'd seen many doctors 12 years and grown worse, worse, but she kept going onwards and upwards. I love the attitude of this woman. I love the attitude of this woman. I think about my own life and I think about the things, the needs that I've had and, and, and the things that I've petitioned God for. Man, I'll tell you this, I haven't gone 12 years. I haven't sourced every opportunity for healing or deliverance or to be set free or to grow or to understand. And, and I haven't gotten worse. If anything, I've kind of just stayed. But this woman just kept coming and kept believing amidst all of that stuff. You see, here's the thing, expectation in life creates energy, doesn't it? When we have expectation about something, it creates a certain type of energy. In us, and when we have, when we live a life daily in expectation of God, that God has great things that He wants to do, that this is the day the Lord has made, that today is a day of purpose and destiny for me, that I'm in the right place at the right time for the right reasons, even though I don't know them. When I live each day like that, it creates energy in me, energy in me, because I just never know when that moment's going to happen with God. I never know when that invitation is going to be handed to me. I never know when the answer is going to come or the chain is going to break. I never know when that revelation is going to come. I live with that sense of expectation because expectation creates energy. For some Christians, the pointy end of the blade is blunt at the moment. I see a lot of blunt Christians who are just kind of eking their way. We've got to this point where we're going, well, geez, I just hope he hurries up and returns. I just, you know, uh, we've had it good for so long and now it's going south and it's getting bad and hurry up, Jesus, and come back. And we're losing that sense of purpose, excuse me, that sense of destiny, that sense of, you know, we're meant to be here and we're meant to be here for a reason. As long as I've got breath, as long as I get out of bed each morning and I take another breath, you know, God's got good place. God, God is not a, he's a loving father. He's a loving father with nothing but the best of intentions for his children. 
There are people that don't have any spiritual energy left because of various circumstances and situations that have allowed that flame to die down and any expectation of the activity, activity of God has disappeared. But not with this woman. There was something about this woman that challenged me the other day when I read her story. Expectation creates energy. You ever notice how easy it is to get your kids to bed the night before Christmas? Hey? Every out 364 nights of the year, they will not go to bed. But that one night, they're in their pyjamas by lunchtime and they want to go to bed. Why? Because they're expecting something the next morning when they wake up. If they're expecting something, or you're going on a holiday, right? And they, like, when there's a sense of expectation for something, our kids, go, they go to bed. And you know what? They might have talked and argued all night, 364 uh, nights of the year. I'd pop my head into Jordan and Jonathan and have to say at least four, three, four, five times a night, hey, guys, go to sleep. Hey, guys, go to sleep. That's enough. Boys, go to sleep. That's enough. But the night before Christmas, it's like they went mute. They couldn't speak. We, you didn't have to do anything because there was this sense of expectation of something great that was going to happen tomorrow. And so it just created this energy. They got themselves ready for bed. They're in bed. They're tucked in there, ready to go to sleep. Expectation creates a sense of energy with us. There's a couple of things that we know from this collection of ancient documents about the nature of faith and expectation. I want to just throw a couple of thoughts at you this morning. Number one, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists. That's a bare minimum, isn't it? I mean, otherwise, what are you coming to? We've got to believe that, A, he's there. If you don't believe he's there, you probably won't come to him. Or if you do come to him, you won't come in faith or come in, some, in, in hope. And, you know, like when I uh, stood on that roundabout and I prayed when I was 19 years of age, no Christian background or nothing, stood on a roundabout, middle of the Pacific Highway, and I kind of threw it out there in, 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 uh, in hope. But God was very gracious in the midst of my hope because it came from a genuine heart cry, God, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than what I'm experiencing right now, what I'm living and the direction I'm heading in. Laying at bed at night by myself, some nights crying myself to sleep, but everyone thinking I was the life of the party because externally uh, I could put on a really, really great show for the world, but deep down inside I knew, man, I'm as empty as a, an egg. You know, eggs when they put the pins in the end and they used to blow the yolk out? Remember that? I felt like one of those shells. Shell looked really good on the outside. I was playing sport and making rep sides and I had a bunch of friends and we uh, had all those boxes ticked, but inside empty as, empty as a shell. Empty as a shell. I cried out to Jesus and he revealed himself to me. I wasn't testing God. I, I believe there's got to be something there. I hope there's something out there. So if you're there. And I cried out to him. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And also check this out, that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Notice that? God rewards those who earnestly seek him. That makes me, that makes me wonder what are the, what are the rewards? And God, when I don't earnestly seek you, am I missing out on something that you actually want to give to me? Because it's, you say you want to reward those, but the caveat is you got, you, people that earnestly seek after me are going to find things. And people that don't earnestly seek after me, you're probably going to miss out on some stuff that's in the heart of the Father to show you or to give to you. But it's not, you know, Christianity is not uh, like, you know, Doris Day, Kesar, Asra, whatever will be, will be. You know, we get saved and then we just go, I've got my fire insurance, now I can do whatever I want. And God, you'll just spend your whole life just loving on me and giving me everything and I'll just land where I'm meant to just because you're good. And well, God says, no, 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 you kind of cooperate with me and work with me in your own spiritual growth. And, and there are still choices that we need to make to walk the path with God and we still need to take time to get to know him and we need to take time to earnestly seek him. But it says, without faith, we know this about the nature of expectation, without faith, it's impossible to please God. See, a good father will set us up for success, not failure. So expect plenty of opportunities in your life to trust him. Huh? A good father sets us up for success, not for failure. So if it's impossible to please God without faith, and God wants his children to please him, he's going to make sure you have plenty of opportunities in your life for faith. And everybody went, oh, really? Because we don't like faith so much, do we? We just want to know. We just want to know. But one of the things we know about the nature of expectation, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Second thing we know about the nature of faith and expectation is that faith implies the absence of the expectation. Once you see something, you don't need faith per se. So, 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 so to have faith 
means that, that whatever you're believing for or whatever you're hoping for is not present. It's not current. It's not there. That, that's what the faith is. That's why we, we, we have faith. Because we're expecting and believing for something else out there. It says, Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. So faith is confidence in the midst of hope. So we're hoping for things. We're believing for things. I don't quite get it. I, I, it's, 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 it's not quite there yet. It's in the distance. It's in the distance. It's not there. Once it arrives, people go, well, I don't need faith anymore because I've got it. I don't really need to trust God to fulfill his word because he's just fulfilled his word. There it is. But faith, the fact that we have faith implies that there are going to be things out there that God wants for us that he's calling us to believe for, but they're not quite happening yet. And so we press in in this thing called faith. We keep faith. We keep expectation that God wants to do and God wants to give and God wants to show and all the stuff that God has for us. Faith is the confidence in the midst of hope. Faith is assurance of what you're not seeing. So when you're not seeing something, but you know that God has spoken it, or you know that it's available, you know that God's, God's just whispered to you, or you've seen it, but it's not there, that's when we stand in this thing called faith or expectation. We live with expectation. It's the confidence in the midst of hope. It's an assurance of what we're not seeing. It's the confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. Faith's not simply that which pulls the unseen into our human existence. It's the quality that sustains us while we're waiting. Faith is that which sustains us while we're waiting for whatever that thing is. That answer to prayer, the fulfillment of that promise. Faith is what we walk in while we're waiting. So we're constantly called to a life of expectation. And a life of faith and a life of trust. And the third thing we know about the nature of expectation is that faith is an integral part of experiencing a life as God intends us to experience it. Romans 1.17 says, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, it's all faith, just as it is written, the righteous will what? Live by faith. Now the righteous will pop in and out of faith just whenever they need something. They'll just pop in when they need a bit. And they'll pop out when they think they've got life under control again. Eh? We'll trust God when we're desperate, when I'm backed into a corner and don't have a choice. But for the rest of it, Lord, I've got it from here, God. Thank you very much. There's something about the quality and type of life that God calls believers to. I'm speaking to Christians here. If you're a believer in Jesus, there's something about this quality of faith and expectation. That God says, if you want to truly experience life to its fullest, the way that I intended, then you're always going to have to be walking in faith. You're always going to have to be believing and trusting and walking with a sense of expectation in whatever it is that God is saying or God is doing or God is showing. See, faith's not something we need to muster in order to get an outcome. It's a state of existence for the believer as we wait for the ultimate fulfillment of our faith, which is the reuniting of us with our Father for eternity. It's the reuniting of us with our Father for eternity. That's the ultimate fulfillment of our faith. And so we walk in faith all the time because I'm waiting for that fulfillment to come. One day I'm going to leave this shell of a body and I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to be with Him for eternity. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart and I know many of you do too in this room. So faith's not something we need just to get an outcome. The Bible says faith is something we walk in all the time, before the outcome, when we get the outcome, and after the outcome. There's something about faith that's imperative to the life of a believer. And a lot of believers have no spiritual energy because they're not living a life of faith. There's no expectation anymore. There's, 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 no, there's no thinking that God has more things as a father that he wants to speak to us. There's no, there's no expectation. that I, 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 remember, I remember years ago, I, I had stomach ulcers from, from some bad decisions probably when I was younger. And, and me and my wife had gotten married. And, and sometimes we get to a point where we just get comfortable with, with things. Anyone ever just get comfortable with something? You know, it's not probably God's highest, but you, we just get comfortable with it. It's just the way it is, you know. And I remember having stomach ulcers and, and I, we were sitting in a church in Bundaberg not long after we got married and this guy was there and he said, look, is anyone sick? Come forward. I want to pray for anyone that's sick. I, I'd, I'd gotten so used to it that I just didn't, it just became a normal part of this is normal me. My wife 
taps me in the shoulder and says to me, Alan, what about your stomach? Why don't you go up and get prayer? Now, when she's tapped me, it shocked me a little bit because I thought, oh, I'm so used to this now. I, I haven't even thought that God might want to or could or, you know, I'm not even thinking about it. The guy's saying anyone's sick. I'm sitting here sick, but I'm so used to being sick that I'm thinking that's now normal, and so I don't bother with it. So she taps me like a good wife does, and I decide I'll go up the front and get prayed for, and this guy prays for me, and, you know, nothing happened. I didn't, you know, all the stuff that goes on, nothing happened. Stood up there, he prayed this nice prayer for me. I went and sat back down, still had my pain in the stomach. Went home, went to bed that night, woke up the next morning. I've not had that pain in 20-something-odd years from that moment. I don't know. God did something in me. But the point is this, that I'd lost all sense of expectation for that part of my world that God would ever do anything there. You know, and, and, and so I just accepted that this is just what life was. And, and, and the thing is, when we live life without expectation, when we live life devoid of expectation, we, we, we become spiritually apathetic. We become spiritually apathetic. And we lose our energy. We lose our passion. And, and if there's anything that God gives me in life, it's got to be a sense of purpose. It's got to be a sense of destiny. It's got, to be, uh, uh, it's, it's got to be a sense of, hey, I'm not just walking through this life now, getting as many toys as I can. One day I'm going to drop off the perch and we'll see what happens. No, 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 I'm here for a reason. And you're here for a reason. Faith's not something we need to muster in order to get an outcome. It's a state of existence for believers as we wait to be reunited with God. Now, here's the thing. The shadow side of living with expectation or living with faith is that you also open yourself up to disappointment, don't you? We open ourselves up to disappointment. But here's the thing. That's the risk we're going to have to take if we're going to live life to its fullest with God. It's just the risk we have to take. See, the possibility of intimacy with another human being exposes you to the possibility of rejection, doesn't it? So what do you do? Do you live light in fear of rejection and never pursue intimacy with another person? Or do you take the risk? Do you take the risk? The possibility of success exposes us to the possibility of failure. So because you may potentially fail, are you just the kind of person that, well, I won't try really hard and I won't try to get to the top and I won't, I won't try to succeed because what if I don't and I end up failing? There's a shadow side to everything in life. The possibility of winning exposes us to the possibility of losing. You train your whole life to get to the Olympic Games. You, you, you train your whole life to be the best golfer in the world, but then when it comes time to go out and play, you don't want to go out and play because what if you lose? But you've trained all this time to win. But because of the, the, the shadow side of this particular thing, we choose not to do this. We choose not to go places. The choice we have before us is what are we going to allow to determine the next step in our journey? Is it possible intimacy or possible rejection? Is it possible success or possible failure? Is it possibly winning or the possibility of losing? So the possibility of a life lived in expectation or a life held back and limited by the fear of disappointment. What type of life? Are we going to live? What type of life are we going to pursue? See, God wants us to live with expectation and he wants us to live with faith. Now, for the Christians, the believers in Jesus in this room, there is a way to minimize the possibility of disappointment. Focus your faith on the character of the giver, not just the nature of the gifts. Focus your attention on the character of the giver. The character of the one that says, have expectation and faith because I have A, B, C. Focus on the character of him. Don't focus on the A, B, C. Get up each day and walk with him. My expectation lies in the continued involvement of God in my life, not the momentary appearance of a blessing. My expectation lies in the continued involvement of God in my life, not just the momentary appearance of a blessing or an answer. Or a healing. So when we're in those moments of need and we're leaning into faith, we often try to tell God what we need in those moments. But if we listen closely, we'd probably hear the Spirit whisper to us, what you actually need is to rest in your faith and trust me. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. So there are things in this life that you and I simply can't make happen. That you can't change. That you can't shift. And the hidden gift in those moments is the opportunity to crawl up on our Father's lap and simply trust. But to do that, you've got to be living with at least the faith and expectation that he's there, regardless of what you're seeing or regardless of what you're feeling. We're called to live by faith. We're called to live in expectation. 
If you've been disappointed, can I encourage you and challenge you today? Lay aside the disappointment. Try to lay aside the disappointment. Because that disappointment, you don't know what that disappointment is stopping you from receiving that God does actually have for you or still has for you. And some of us have laid our faith down. It's almost like spiritually we've surrendered. Because maybe we haven't seen or we haven't got or we haven't felt. And so we lay it down and we forget the value of living a life of faith and expectation and purpose. You see, expectation creates energy. Have you thrown the towel in when it comes to believing God? Have you lost the expectation of a daily walk with him? Have you been knocked down? Are you still lying on the canvas this morning? Well, be encouraged. You're not the first person to be where you are, and you're not going to be the last person to get there. Find encouragement in the words of David. Psalm 27 They believe that David wrote this in the midst of a very difficult time in his life. Remember, David has these promises of God and he's the king and things are going to go sweet for him. And then his own son betrays him, Absalom. And in the midst of that betrayal, most theologians and historians believe David penned Psalm 27 in the midst of that. And David says this in the midst of a very difficult time. He says, I remain confident of this. I will see. I will see. What does that mean? That means I'm not seeing it right now. I remain confident, but I'm not seeing it right now. But I'm going to stay confident, even though I'm not seeing it right now. I'm still expecting it, even though I'm not seeing it right now. I'm still going to believe in faith, even though I'm not seeing it right now. See, expectation creates energy. He says, I remain confident I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm going to see the goodness of God here. In other words, I've got expectation to encounter and to see the goodness of God here before I get there. Amen? It's not just about there. God has things for us right here and right now in this space. And I, I just want to encourage us because I, 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 I feel like I was saying to the guys when we were praying this morning, I remember the days when we moved into, the GSA, into this building. Who remembers those days? Anyone was around then? Wow, there's energy, wasn't there? There was energy. There was, there, was, there was not just physical energy, but there was spiritual energy too. We were, we were praying for this space. We knew it was coming up. We were praying that council would you know, approve the plans. We were coming up here. We were believing for money to get in here as a community. We came up here. We were putting walls up. A lot of the stuff you see around here was done by people uh, in this room. There was a sense of energy corporately because we, we had a goal. We had something we were believing for, and it just created that sense of energy and faith and that expectation of what God wanted to do and the fulfillment of what God was saying and I just feel like God's saying that he wants to bring us as a community into another season I don't know what that looks like but I feel like there's another season of expectation and faith where God's wanting us to to raise up and get a little bit more uh, I guess spiritually aware open our ears open our eyes get a bit in tune with what he's saying and prepare ourselves for a moment where he's going to lay something before us and call us corporately together to go hey I want you guys to believe for this it's more than just one per- I want you to believe i want you to believe for something great in this community i want you to believe for something great to happen in this community i want you to believe to be a part of something great in the kingdom of god we've only got x amount of days here on planet earth people and we don't know when they're going to end what better way than to spend them in expectation and faith each day opening up our eyes trusting the god of heaven is here with me today and the fact that i'm here today with him tells me he's got plans and purposes And they're good. Amen? They're good. So, Father, I just want to thank you for uh, your word this morning. God, thank you. God, thank you for those moments, Lord, where we're not seeing things. God, those moments where we're not feeling, those moments where we're not experiencing things. Because, Lord, it's in those moments that we get to walk in this incredible gift of faith. God, it's in those moments that we get the invitation, the opportunity to decide, are we going to trust you? Are we going to keep pressing in? Are we going to keep uh, standing up? Are we going to keep believing Or are we going to give in to a spirit of apathy? Are we going to give in to, to, uh, Lord, what we're seeing around us, which sometimes isn't all that impressive? Or are we going to stand up spiritually and press into you and lean into you? Are we going to keep believing? Are we going to get out? And just as David said, are we going to wake up each day and say, I would have lost hope, but I'm not going to lose hope because I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of God right here, right now in the land of the living. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to keep that as my confession. Lord, I believe you and Lord, I trust you. I know you're with me and I know you're good. I know you don't lie. You're not a man 
You don't tell fibs. And so I'm just going to keep walking with you in expectation and faith, waiting for those moments where you bring those good things into my world, Father. So, Lord, I just pray for each person here, Lord. Would you stir us up in that place of faith, God? If there are people here this morning, Lord, their faith is... is God, that flame is flickering. That flame is going down, Lord. God, if there are people here, they've had so many disappointments. It's like those leaves on the tree that have died and, and not allowing that sunlight to come through. Then, then, Lord, I just pray, would you shake those trees? God, shake those trees. Let them dead leaves fall off. God, let people see how much you love them, the good plans and the good purposes that you have for them, God. That this life is not an accident. They're not an accident. They're not here by accident. God, you have a plan and a purpose. And Father, in the next seven days as we leave this building, Lord, I pray that no matter where we go, work, school, play sport, whatever it is, God, would you give us opportunities to tell people about the goodness of Jesus Christ? Would you give us opportunities to show people that there's a God out there that loves them very much and has a great plan and a great purpose for their lives? God, give us those opportunities, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen.